for the next keynote speech talking on Africa Unchained. Please put your hands together for the beautiful Charlene Faderepo. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon again. I'm excited to be here with you again and I'm excited to tell you about a new project that I'm working on. I'll start over. French writer and poet Victor Hugo famously said, there's nothing more powerful than an idea whose time has come. In the year uh, 2009, an unknown entity named Satoshi Nakamoto had a really big idea. And for the next 14 years, that idea would be turned into a market that's $700 million and a market that would change the global financial landscape forever. Of course, the market I'm talking about is Bitcoin. Good afternoon, Africa Bitcoin Conference. My name is Charlene Federepo. I'm a Bitcoin advocate and activist. I'm the CEO of a company called Mango Digital Strategies, where we help countries, companies future-proof their growth through Bitcoin. I am also the founder of a podcast called The Bitcoin in Africa Show, where we are focused on telling the story of the amazing revolution that is happening right here on Africa soil. For the next 10 minutes, I'm going to talk to you about my latest project and tell you how you can be a part of it. The name of my presentation is Africa Unchained. The term Africa Unchained is a term that has been very common right here in Ghana. It was actually popularized by Ghanaian economist George Agiti. So what does that mean? Africa Unchained means the desire and potential for Africa for break the, to break the change of the historical challenges that it has faced and to finally live up to its, few, its full potential. So I don't have to tell this room the reasons why Africa is chained, oppressive regimes, hyper-Bitcoinization, tribal wars, massive corruption, lots and lots of reasons why. Most of those reasons existed in the past. And the past is very important. In fact, black American novelist Maya Angelou said, if you don't know, you can't figure out where you're going if you don't know where you have been. However, I submit to you that the only commodity more precious than Bitcoin is your time. And I suggest we use our time talents and treasures focused on Africa's future. Which is why I'm excited to share with you my newest project, which is a book about Bitcoin in Africa. You guys heard Femi talk earlier today. He said that we needed to tell more African stories. He said we needed to make sure that the Bitcoin narrative included Africa's perspective. That's exactly one of the projects that I'm working on today. The goal of my project is simple, explain the Bitcoin narrative with an Africa lens and make the case that Africa has the most compelling Bitcoin use case in the world. We plan to do this by three ways. First, we're gonna promote Bitcoin or African Bitcoin entrepreneurs. We are going to dispel the horrible and misleading myths that we hear about Bitcoin in Africa. And last but not least, we're gonna share some African Bitcoin success stories. Many of these success stories are right here in this room. But more importantly, we have, we're gonna share a vision, a different vision for Africa. A vision for Africa where Africa can finally live up to its full potential. Now I need your help for this part of my presentation. What if I told you we could design for an Africa that would break the chains of global hunger, poverty, and scarcity without the use of an NGO, a central bank, or a development loan? Raise your hand if you would be on board for that version of Africa. Okay. What if I told you we could design for a sustainable and green Africa where basic human rights like access to water and access to electricity were not reserved for the wealthy, but they were accessible to everybody. 
Raise your hand if you would be on board with that version of Africa. And what if I told you we could design for an Africa where highly skilled professionals could stay in their own countries and still get access to the best jobs and the best career opportunities? Raise your hand if you would be on board with that version of Africa. Everybody's hand should be up. And last but not least, what if I told you we could design for an Africa where money moves fluidly and naturally across borders and that money helps to fuel African-led, African-owned businesses. Raise your hand if you would be on board for that version of Africa. These are not stories. These are not fables. This is the reality that we can build for Africa. This is an Africa where she can finally live up to her full potential. The time is now, and the answer is Bitcoin. And to do it, I need your help. I know a lot about Bitcoin in Africa, mainly through my podcast, but I don't know everything. So I would love everybody's help to help me tell the story of Bitcoin in Africa. If you hit this QR code, you're gonna get two questions. One, how is Bitcoin transforming Africa? So that's in your city, in your community, in your country, or in your region. And two, what does an African Bitcoin standard look like? Going back to what we heard from Femi, what is the African story that we want the world to know? No story is too small, no story is too big. So I hope you will help me in this journey. Any story that is used in a book will be attributed to its author, and whatever organization that you are building, whatever organization you are trying to build, don't think your small project is too small because small projects become big projects. And we want to make sure that your voice is included in this story. Because together, we can seize the opportunities presented by Bitcoin and finally forge a brighter future for Africa. Thank you. Mm -hmm.